talked about the number of churches that were not open after COVID. Now, who's not open? That a number of churches. Well, in, in Oregon, uh, Washington, oh. and California and stuff, you know, you, 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 you can't go to church. No. Well, but even after COVID, they say that a lot of them, you know, they just won't have the, finan the finances to be able to. They're going to shut down. They're just going to shut down. What, well, Connie? Know, we go to church in Washington. I Do you? Yes, yeah. Because my daughter-in-law lives there, or my stepdaughter lives there, and they can't go to church, but they're oh, going to. There's a really cool video that my pastor recorded and he played. He did it on line and also in person where he said, um, we ain't canceling church. <laughs> we ain't canceling church. God's the head of the <laughs> church. For him. Right? So you know where I'm at. I'm here every Sunday. Come and get me. And he's like, in fact, I kind of hope you do so that I get a lot of publicity and I can ch uh, pay off this church building. <laughs> That's awesome. But even if the church, even if the church isn't open because of COVID, you still should be tithing. Well, yeah, it should be. Oh yeah, yeah, we should tithe. Well, he wasn't saying that because people weren't tithing. He was just saying. No, no, I'm just saying you should because you should you should still be supporting the church because that's something we have to do whether we. Oh, well, I think she's talking about extra money. It'll get her extra, yeah. get yeah. extra pop, yeah. you know, publicity yeah. and bring more money in so he could pay yeah. off it. Yeah, we just want to build our church, don't we, Barbara? <laughs> <I'm> yes. like, <laughs> I want that new, you know, because I was getting real excited. I thought we'd have the new um, um, new stuff, the new nave and everything um, before my class would start. Well, that's just, you know, yeah. so I could have a bigger classroom. I was telling Wes, you need to build, build me a big classroom, you know. Anyway, that's just, yeah. it will be whenever God wants it to be, right? And, and right. one thing, too. You know, God may be, some of these churches may not be reopening because God shut them down. Well, I uh, call this time a cleaning up of the church. It's exactly. dividing, it's yeah. dividing the weight, wheat and the tares, is it not? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, we've had a lot of things even happen at our church, you know, they just said, what's going on? But, you know, I, I think God is cleaning up the churches and for something. So... We are now on lesson six. One more week of numbers. Aren't you excited? No. Well, then we hit. <laughs> Thanks, Ola. That's really nice. Um, <laughs> oh, wow. Where's my prayer? Well, I tell you what. Would someone like to open us up in prayer? I'm going to change it up for a little bit. Would somebody open us up with prayer? I will. I will. Thank you. Connie, go ahead. Okay. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful and thankful that you give us this opportunity to know your word, to study your word, and I ask that you would help us to practice your word this week. Mm -hmm. Please give Denise and all of the leaders wisdom and joy and patience. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. All right. Since we have two more weeks, does everybody know why we do an at-a-glance chart? Division. Mm -hmm. Division, yeah. Anything else? This is oh, an yeah. overview. It's an overview, yeah, so you can remember. I don't know about you, but I know that going over this every, I used to think, oh, how redundant. But going over it and over it and over it again, you get an idea to where you can say, I learned that in numbers, and it's in chapters, maybe one through five or something like that. It really mm -hmm. does help you. So if we look at just chapters one through 10, what is one through 10? Just throw up some things. What sort of things did we look at? Israel was numbered in clans. Mm -hmm. And the, du the duties. What, Cheryl? The duties of the, uh, the priests and the Levites. Yeah. The sacrifices and offerings, what they were to be. Yeah. Where they were to camp, how they were to move, and the duties of the Levites. Yeah, they were going to t take off. And for, in chapter 10, that's when they picked up and started, let's move it, you know. Mm -hmm. So in, um, after Passport, the cloud rose up for Israel's first move towards the land. 
So he was preparing them for their first move. And what were they going to do? And this was in the second year, in the second month, on the 20th of the month. I love it. Two, two, and two. That's how you remember that. If you ever want to remember it, I don't know. Oh. Um, the cloud began to lead Israel from Mount mm -hmm. Sinai to the wilderness, wilderness of Paran. So if you look at 11 through 14, what would the what did the people do? Rebel. Yeah. Grumble, grumble, grumble. Yeah. <laughs> right? And they spurned God. Yeah. Yeah. And what did that cost them? Going to the promised land. I know. Doesn't that just break your heart? Yeah. They rejected the land, so they what God said they would die in the wilderness. They would wander for it for 40 years, and their children would enter the land. Yeah, the, the way the people had been, though, they probably didn't believe him when he said they'd wander for 40 years and die in the wilderness. They thought, meh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they went up and they tried to do it without him, didn't they? Okay, mm -hmm. 15 through 21. There was what? More rebellion. Yep, more rebellion. Yeah. What else? What was important about these chapters? And that's really up there. Uh, Aaron's staff. Korah. Yeah. Korah, rebellion of Korah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but he established Aaron as a priest and Levi's to read. Um, and made a way for them to purify themselves. Yes. And Moses also struck the rock instead of speaking to it mm -hmm. and therefore lost his entrance into the promised land. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mary Manarin died. Bronze serpent. What, Jan? Hi, Jan, by the way. The bronze serpent. Oh, yeah, the bronze serpent. Yeah. 22 through 25, what would you say about those? chapters you know also in 21 god started they started defeating the other peoples too with god's help yeah with god's help instead of trying to do it on their own right okay 22 through 25 i have painters in the house i hear all sorts of weird noises what did we learn in 22 through 25 what was the big thing on those chapters we learn about follow yeah, he was a king of Moab, and he hired Balaam to curse Israel, but God blessed him instead. <laughs> but what did Balaam... Um, go ahead. Okay. Uh, Israel um, worships that ba Baal of Peor in total rebellion. Yeah, they went and did it again. But Balaam, Balaam told Balak how to get Israel to sin by doing that. Um, worshiping another god. But Phinehas, how do you say that? Phinehas? Phineas. 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 <laughs> what, Barbara? How do you say that name? Phineas. Phineas, okay. Yeah, he went and just, and remember, I mean, this is the thing that got me. This is the first time I caught this, that they were actually doing this in the tent of meeting. Mm hmm and everybody was watching them. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But Phineas just pulled up a spear and just poked them out, you know. They were gone. So we are getting to 26 through 31. This was kind of an interesting, it was kind of boring too, wasn't it? Because it was like rehashing things again. Yeah, I think we'll do a lot of that in Deuteronomy, but we'll have a lot more story things too. But one is Numbers 26 through 31, just if you would have that as a section division, what would you, what would you say it was about? Well, I kind of oh. put it as the new beginning. Yeah, I like that. The new beginning. Why would Ray call it the new beginning, y'all? All of the original members are gone. It's yeah. Gone. Generation. Yeah, so the new generation was going to come up, right? Mm -hmm. 
And they were yeah. starting to uh, root out Canaan. Yeah. Midianites they conquered. After that was a big one. After and the new the generation. The new yeah, generation they, they, had to be reminded about um, the feasts and the offerings mm -hmm. because he taught that to them when they originally came out of Egypt. Yeah, because they were just young critters when they came out of Egypt, right? After the plague, yeah. Kathy, you mentioned this, after the plague is key for understanding chapter 25. It was not just another plague. It was the final judgment of God on the first generation and the opportunity to unleash the blessing of God on the second generation who have now reached their majority. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. It was, the plague was a judgment. I want you to remember that. The plague was a judgment. So in Numbers 26, what would you put as a chapter theme for that? Hi, Molly. A census again in Moab. Yeah, yeah. So what happened after the plague? Numbers chapter 26. They took the census, right? Who was to be censored? censored? That's not right. Who are they to count? Fenced. The tribes. The, the tribes. Men 20 years old and older. Hmm. Yeah. And, and what the were ones they able to go out to war. Yes, exactly. To go to war. Numbered Israel in the wilderness. And it was, okay, if you relate this to Numbers 1 when Moses and Aaron numbered Israel in the um and the Sinai, you know, it was the same thing. It was to go for men of war. Yeah. Seven of the tribes were actually larger counts than previously, though in the overall count, they were 1,820 less. Did, did, I hope that, I, I just kind of sent you, I just copied because I thought, why should I just do a sheet on it when I can just copy the book, right? Um, and it kind of goes through and shows you. Simeon went down from 59,300 to 22,200. Um, that that was a drastic decrease. Um, who else went down? Somebody else went way down, didn't they? Reuben went down 3,000. 3,000? Yeah, but Simeon went down like 37,000. Yeah. 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 Simeon kind of because he was getting, he was being punished by God because of his rebellion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Issachar went up. Yeah, isn't that funny? Issachar, Zebulun, Manasseh, Benjamin, Dan, mm -hmm. uh, Asher went way up. Yeah. Dan did? Dan, uh, mm -hmm, Dan went from, no, Asher went from 41,000 to 53,000. Yeah. I like, I see it here. Um, in both yeah, lists, there were six tribes that numbered over 50,000 and six number fewer for 50,000. 12 units of 50,000 is a convenient way to reach the grand total of 600,000. But there's another reason why there is numbering, which chapter 26 tells us about. What was that other reason? For the inheritance. For yeah. the inheritance, exactly, yeah. To divide up the land. Mm -hmm. So we looked at some cross references about inheritances. And this is in day one, A and B. What did you learn in Ephesians 1, 13 through 14 about the inheritance? Guarantee. Uh, what is our guarantee? Of our inheritance in Christ. The Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's, the Spirit Holy Spirit yeah. seals yeah. us, and that is our pledge of inheritance. Yeah. How about First Peter three through five? It's imperishable, undefiled, unfading, kept in heaven by God's power through faith for our salvation in Christ. So that's what I put. Well, that's the answer too. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. 
Yeah. So uh, what about our inheritance? I mean, how does that affect what and I'm talking application now? How mm -hmm. does that touch you? Or what do you learn about your relationship with God? So we're protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Yeah. How do you apply that to today? Does it give you assurance? I'm still mm -hmm. protected. You're God's still in control. I think it should be something we should be really thankful and grateful for. Um, you know, you just think about an earthly inheritance. And, you know, if you knew you were getting something of uncomparable value when your parents died or something like that but what we're getting from God is much more in how you would you know treasure and value that and do everything that you can to protect that relationship you have with the one who's giving you the inheritance it also separates us from a lot of other faiths who who don't have that assurance and they don't know from day to day where they're going to go Mm -hmm. Absolutely, Linda. That's a good point. And it's not through works, is it? Right. We can't work our way into heaven. Through God's grace. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Right? It's also a scripture you can say when the enemy whispers in you, are you really saved? And you're like, no, 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 no. Look at the scriptures. <laughs> That's an excellent point. I, I like that. Don't y'all? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know about y'all, but I always, well, you know, am I really, you know, am I in the group? <laughs> you know, it's not based on what you do, it's based on what Jesus did. So, yeah, right. And then we have to accept him as our savior. And that's, that's how we get in. That's how we get there. We have to believe. Yes. And that's so, what the problem the Israelites had. And they had God right there. Mm -hmm. You're right. You're right. They had him right there and they didn't believe him. So. <laughs> We do too. We have them inside of us. There you go, Connie. <laughs> we do, but but the other people around us that aren't saved don't, and that's mm -hmm. you know. So have you that's ever, sad. Have you ever heard somebody say, "What makes you different?" I've heard that before, and it's the Holy Spirit. It's yep. God and me that makes them different. And and they can see it. Yeah, they can see that there's a difference. Right. Absolutely. Well, who else was numbered and who did the numbering? The Levites were mm -hmm. numbered. Yeah. And they're, oh, they're numbered from a month old and upward. Yeah. And they increased by a thousand from the previous census. Oh. In Numbers 1, they had been numbered and used to redeem the firstborn of Israel. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, so why were the Levites had not been numbered because no inheritance of land was given to them. Mm -hmm. But what was their inheritance? The tithe. Mm -hmm. The tithe. Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting? Because we're going to get into a lot more tithing here in a few few minutes. <laughs> you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. It actually says that the Lord is their inheritance. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm wonder what the people thought you know well i'm not going to get any land what am i going to get you know <laughs> they worked it out though and what they decided to do by the time jesus come was they were just ripping the people off weren't they but that's another story when the men were numbered in chapter 26 there was not a man whose number at sinai who was still alive except for joshua and caleb Wow. So by this time, everybody else had died that was 20 years or older at the time of the first census because they were told in 13 and 14 that they would die in the wilderness. I wonder how many of them did not believe that would actually happen. Most of them probably. Well, they were dead, weren't they? Especially yeah. the younger ones. Yeah, I think that was a teaching to the younger ones, that, so the younger ones would have hopefully more belief. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, I was saying, I think especially the younger ones wouldn't believe that they would die. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. 
40 years is a long time. Mm -hmm. You don't think about that when you're young. No, you don't, do you? It was Moses who did the numbering and Eliezer. So numbers 27. Barbara, um, read your package will be delivered today. Oh. <laughs> I just got a text. I just got a text. Okay. Um, <laughs> and I think they were are requiring a signature. I don't know for sure. I saw that somewhere, but mine okay. usually just goes ahead and leaves it. Okay. So number 27 is about the daughters of Mr. Z. Yeah, Mr. Z. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody want to try that name? No. No? <laughs> no. Uh, uh, Mr. Jello. Jalopahad. 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 Yeah, Jalopahad sounds good. Thank you. Oh, yeah, Jalopahad. Jalopahad. Okay. I, I got yelled at the other day for not saying Ecclesiastes. Right. Y'all know I can't talk. I mean, I'm going to have a tough one with that class. Okay. What are verses 11, 1 through 11 about? Numbers 27 verses 1 through 11. If you do section divisions within your chapters, you should be able to go to your Bible and just read to the right of it. Of course, I didn't do it this time, so I can't help you. But I no, I actually did chapter 27. I just put women's inheritance. Yes. Mm -hmm. The one through women's five. rights over their inheritance. Well, and it's the daughters of, of the love yeah. God. Yeah, what, what, and he's um, from uh, Man uh, Manasseh. Mm -hmm. All right. So, what was the deal here? They're just going over the story. They so wanted no, land. There was Killing. no debt, no brothers, so there's no land inheritance. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. so those women would just be where? Uh, Nowhere. Yeah, they wouldn't <laughs> have any inheritance. Unprotected, out in the cold. Yeah. Really, you know, and that that is that's kind of frightening, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Ladies, ladies, look at it this way. This is the first woman's rights. Yes, that's what I thought. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. But how did Moses determine this, though? He asked God. Yeah. He asked God. Yeah, yeah, he always goes to God about these things, yeah. right? Their father had died in the wilderness. And by the way, he was not part of Korah. And he had no sons. So Moses brought the case before the Lord. And mm -hmm. what did the Lord tell him? Oh. Take care of him, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Give him an inheritance. Yeah. And they said, if no daughter, then his brother and to the last nearest kinsman. That's what saved Ruth and um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Her, his mother-in-law. In verses Naomi. 12 through 14. Go ahead. Naomi. Naomi, thank you. Yeah, I forgot her name. I knew it was something simple, now, but not that hard. Did we study earlier that if the if you if there are no sons and the land passed to the daughter, that if the daughter married outside of the tribe, yeah, that she would lose later. the inheritance. Yes, that that is part of this deal. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. I was thinking that was yeah, absolutely because exactly. they wanted to keep the land within the tribes, right? Right. Right. Didn't give them very many options. <laughs> they were... you think of that verse in James that says you have not because you ask not. And just, mm -hmm. I thought it was just this beautiful picture of, again, relationship, you know, in terms of um, if we ask God for what we need, even in the Old Testament, you know, I mean, they didn't grumble. They could have gone and grumbled and complained. Oh, this isn't fair, blah, blah, blah. But they didn't. They just simply went and stated their case and God heard them and he honored that. You know, and I just thought that's just such a beautiful thing. This is the Old Testament, right? And God doesn't change. And so if we have a need, bring it to him. Don't grumble. Don't tell our neighbor. Don't gripe. Just uh, ask him. You know, it was just, I thought that was cool. Yeah, I, I, thought, I thought about that too. What? I just said that's a really good, good thought. Yes, I like that. Yeah, I, I, I thought about it not as deeply but you did it a lot deeper than i did michelle but yeah and, but, yeah i thought it was really neat go ahead and 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 uh also we're encouraged that we should ask come to him again and again 
mm -hmm. know, with what our needs were. And I, I guess I, I feel like I should share this week um, something that the Lord did for me that I was just totally blown away. Um, I fell on my shoulder in January and uh, it was a shoulder I'd had operated on before. Mm -hmm. And they said there was rotator cuff damage. And I was like trying to say, well, surely if I tried this thing or that thing, and I finally gave up the beginning of March and called the doctor and they said, okay, we'll get you in, in April 22nd. I was <laughs> like six weeks. How am I supposed to pick up a 10 month old with one arm? You know, it's not yeah. easy. And I brought it to the Lord again this past week, one night. Um, and, and told him, his will be done, but I really need it healed so I can, you know, continue helping and ministering to people. And I woke up the next morning and I had no pain in that shoulder. Wow. And I haven't had any since. So I guess I need to call and cancel the doctor appointment. But wow. it was just a reinforcement to me that God really cares about little bit, bitty me and what I do, you know, he really cares and will answer prayer. Awesome. And you know, don't, don't you think it goes back to the heart too? I mean, Barbara, you're such a servant. You're just, you weren't asking because you're griping because it hurts and you're, it's painful. And God, why aren't you doing this? You're asking because you want to continue being his hands and feet. And I think God hears that, right? He knows our right. heart. And I think those are the prayers that he just loves to answer because you know, he doesn't need us to do, to be his hands and feet, but he wants us to be. And so when we're obedient and we have a need, whether it's financial or healing, and don't you think the days that we're headed into, we're going to have to know how to do this. He is going to be our only source. You know, we're, yes. we're going to have to yeah. know how to believe for things like we've never had to before because we simply have to. So that is right. so cool. Thanks, Barbara. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Is anybody else smelling a soothing aroma? This is like an offering. <laughs> Amen. It's it's great. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. That's that's neat. Yeah. So what did the Lord tell Moses to do? Well, commission Joshua. Well, first well, he, he told him to go to go ahead, yeah. right? He was supposed to go up on the mountain and see all the land that they would be getting, the Israelites would be getting. Yeah, and why wouldn't he not see, go into the land? Well, because he sinned at the, the waters of Meribah. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he didn't do what God told yeah. him to do. Yeah. Well, that's the sin. Well, yeah. and he, he, <laughs> he included himself. I mean, what are, are we to we? do? You know, we can do this. Yeah. It was arrogant, yeah. 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 He was just he, God he, is holy before mm -hmm. this their eyes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We we read um Deuteronomy thirty four. What did um it add to the information about Moses' death and that? Do you remember? He um, he, he climbed the mountain at 120 years of age, and he I don't know if I could do that. You ought to see the you ought to see the mountain. I've been there. <laughs> he was clear of eye, full of vigor. Um, he showed Moses all of the land. That must have been some view. And then God buried Moses himself, and the location is still known unknown, excuse me, unknown today, somewhere in Moab opposite Baal, Baal Peor. Absolutely. Yeah, and I've been there. I'll tell you a story. I didn't grab a picture. I didn't, sorry, I was just, I thought about it too late. Um, but when Ben and I got up there and I, I asked the uh, YL, who was our guide, I said, where's Israel from here? You know, and he said, well, it's over that away, you know. And Ben turned around and he goes, I bet Moses says, and this is what you're promising them? Because <laughs> you look out there and it's just that rock, you know, a, you know, a tree here or maybe a tree over yonder, you know, but this just rock, you know. 
anyway, I just had to throw that in there. Ben was so funny. He goes, I, I wouldn't be so impressed if I was Moses. <laughs> what can I say? Uh, it also, De Deuteronomy also said that Joshua was filled with a spirit of wisdom. Yes. I thought that was wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when he laid hands on him. And, and, and also, uh, to what you were saying when your husband said that he wouldn't want it, times were different in those days. Land was important. And it was Absolutely. Very, yes, and so that's why, you know, it was, it was good for them. Can you yeah, but, imagine being Moses in your... You know, it says his eyes were not dim and his vigor was not abated. So he's not sick. He's not, you know, old age. You know, he's not going to die of natural causes. The Lord is just going to take him. Can you, you know what I mean? It's like, I guess God really does know the beginning and the ending of our days. And it doesn't matter if you're, you know, you don't have to go by sickness. But I mean, can you imagine? It just, it kind of breaks your heart, right? For Moses, like, he's this vigorous man still. And and he's going to pass this down to Joshua, and it, that's it. Wow. Yeah, and you know what's funny is, and it reminds me later on, and I think it's Joshua or somewhere, uh, Caleb says, okay, I want this land. He was 80 years old, and he was full of vigor. You know, he was like a 20-year-old. You know, it's, the Bible says that. So the God gave them strength, mm -hmm. you know, and he built a whole, you know, little nation of his own. It was kind of neat. Yeah. And also their mode of transportation were their feet. For seven right. forty-four. You know that whenever they went anywhere, they walked. So they were probably in better shape than we are. Yeah. Yeah, they were in good shape, were they not? Mm -hmm. Okay. I think we also can. I always pray that we live in health until the day we go home to be with Him. Yes. Oh, that's a good thing to pray. Mm-hmm. I like that, Catherine. Thank you. I'm going to add that to my prayer list daily. <laughs> thank the Lord. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I thank him every day for my health because I can still get up in the morning and I can still get around. Yeah. yeah and I have a tendency to think what's going to hurt today. <laughs> <laughs> I need to change my attitude. Don't I? You just... <laughs> yep. it doesn't mean it's not, it it's not going to hurt though. It still doesn't mean it's not going to hurt. <laughs> well, I'm, so, I'm, you know, it's I'll be 65 works. next this month it's april 1st um and i'm getting arthritis and it's Happy birthday because this is april 1st well it's not today it's on the 16th is my birthday and april, i'll be april yeah. 16th is your birthday yeah uh-huh that's my birthday too <gasps> Jerry! Oh, that's but i'm wonderful. older than you i'm older than you <laughs> okay you well i gotta write that down by the way, if you send me your birthdays, I'll send you an e-card on your birthday. Uh, Denise, there's, yeah. there's, there's something about walking, though, that is invigorating and, and is actually healing. When we lived in East Tennessee, uh, every time we went up anywhere near Mount Leconte, you'd run into people who hiked Mount Leconte. We hiked it twice, but the, you'd run into people who hiked it. And I'll never forget this one woman, she was about 90 years old. And when she was in her late 60s, she had some really serious illness. And uh, so her family and the doctors had encouraged her to get out and get exercise. And she didn't want to do that. And so she decided that, well, she would like to go out and hike in the woods. So she actually wound up starting to hike just around uh, the trails at Mount Leconte. And I, she was like in her early 90s or right at 90, and I've forgotten how many times she had hiked Mount Leconte, and her health was just unbelievable. Wow. But evidently, in her late 60s, when she started walking, she was just in terrible shape. And you would run into people like that just real frequently uh -huh. who were, you know, avid hikers of Mount, the trails at Mount Leconte who, you know, just swore that this had saved, that walking had saved their lives. That's neat. We got a lot, Miss Marjorie, she walks, she's on her walker. She's 96 years old. And you see her twice a day walking around. It's, wow. it's amazing. I have this 96 year old aunt that still goes to the gym three days a week. Oh my gosh. And I don't even do that. And, and the, gy the gym is very good for older people. Very, it keeps you moving. 
if they're open. <laughs> they're open. <laughs> they're open here. Mine are here. Open. Very mine. minimal here. Yeah, mine are open. Cheryl, yeah. where are you at? California. Oh, well, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I know. Please, <laughs> please, please. <laughs> uh, well, let's get back to Joshua. So the Lord said to commission Joshua, and Moses did so by laying his hands on it. We have got cross-references about Joshua. What sort of things did you learn about Joshua? Just throw them out there because we're running out of time. He was Moses' Moses's assistant. That's hard to say sometimes. Yes, that was hard to say. What is she? Yeah, Josh, he was a young man. He served Moses. Um, he stayed in the tent of me. He just pretty much hung around Joseph, um, Joseph, Moses all the time. In Numbers, we learned that Joshua was the son of Nun mm -hmm. from the tribe of Ephraim. 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 He, along with Caleb, gave a good report from the land and encouraged the people that God would bring them into the land. Only Joshua and Caleb would enter because of their good report. No. Okay. But it was interesting. In number, his name, his given name was Hoshea. Yeah. And, and uh, Moses changed it to Joshua when he went into the land to spy it out. What else do you know about the name, Catherine? Do you have, did It's you know, Jesus, isn't it? It's the name of Jesus, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's the same yeah. name, only, Yeshua. you know, through time, Yeshua. Yeah, Yeshua. Isn't that yeah. interesting? Um, he was a man in who is in the spirit. In Deuteronomy 34, we learned that he was filled with the spirit of wisdom. Mm -hmm. How would you apply that to your life? Now, think of it. I'm going to... Have you learned about, one of you learned about Moses and Joshua? Is there someone in your life who has been an influence like Moses was to Joshua, an example of godly wisdom? Is there someone in your life to whom you need to be an example of godly wisdom? Everybody. I was thinking too, you know, how we all need a Moses and we all need a Joshua. We need to have somebody that's ahead of us that we're inspired and encouraged and we're learning from and maybe being mentored from. But we also have to have the hand of somebody like a Joshua that's not as far along as we are to nurture and disciple. And you know what I mean? Yes. So that this chain and what would happen just in the church if everybody did that? You know, what would it, what would it look like? You know, how strong would we be? Um, I was reading a Facebook post the other day, and it was, oh, we got to get people saved. And I agree with that, but it's like, so. Who so saves them? But you, right. Well, then, exactly. then what you do? But you also have to disciple people, right? You, you plant the seed, but you got to water it. You have to nurture it so it will grow. And anyway, sorry. Yeah. yeah you know, though, to, look up, to find people to look up to than to think that somebody's looking up to me. Right. I and the older we get, the more that happens, doesn't it? Very. Yes. Yeah. yeah you we have a, a good we point, have... Michelle. Very important to do that. Disciple mm -hmm. people, not just mm -hmm. bring them the word of salvation. Well, you know, it's God who saves them. We're just the yes. ones who give them the word, you know. Yeah. Yep. But I agree with Michelle. How many times have you seen where people join the church and they drop out? You know why they yes. drop out? Because they don't have a Moses to bring that Joshua what up. You know, oh, well, they've been baptized, they're saved, let's get on with it, you know, let's go to the next person, you know, you got, you got to take care of that person. I've seen churches leave people okay. behind. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Well, in our church, we have a program where the older women in the church uh, are disciple, each choosing one of the younger women, and they meet with them weekly to study, but mm -hmm. they also do stuff like talk about, you know, cooking yeah. and other things too um, yes. to help them bring them along with the step. and isn't it all about relationship because you know when you're in that relationship that kind of that nurturing relationship with somebody they see your flaws too right you get to share right. life and and there's right. this reality of life and and it shows them hey i can do this i don't have to be perfect you know but we're growing right. or better, better than we were yesterday you know it's just it, it's all about relationship i think which you see between Moses and Joshua, you see relationships. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
and treating God as holy before people. That's so important, isn't it? Yes, yes. I'm going to go through this one real quick because it's about numbers and offering the instructions. Um, it was a new generation. I can't read that. What did I do to this poor page? Well, let's see here when I wrote, when I'm trying to read. Numbers 28. That's, that's my fault. I put that picture in there. And it covered it up. No. 28. I don't know, before we leave, I don't know if anyone uh, mentioned this, but uh, the word Hoshea, J J J uh, his original name meant to save, and Moses renamed him God saves. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That's what I was looking for before. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay, there was a new generation that had been younger when God gave, had, what, had given the information about the offerings and feasts previously. Some of the feasts would not have been celebrated until they went into the land. So God, you know, Moses was saying, okay, when we go into land, because we're getting close to it, this is what we need to do. Also, the feasts and offers, offerings, along with accompanying grain offerings and libations, are mentioned here in a concise manner and with some additional detail. Mm -hmm. Um so the appointed times in numbers was daily continual burnt offerings, weekly Sabbath offerings, beginning of the month and annual feast of Passover and feast of weeks. You can look at your chart and that's a real good chart y'all to just follow. Mm -hmm. So based on the chart, which of the feasts are in the chapter, we have the trumpets, day of atonement, and Feast of Tabernacles or Booze. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, I'm going over that real quick. Because I, I, I like I like numbers 30. So, what are the vows? What are vows in this chapter? When it, we looked it up. Basically, if a man made a vow or, or an oath, it's the same thing, okay? He was not to violate his word. He must do what he says. A woman made an oath, and then they had all the, you know, it, it had to be, you know, she was to keep it unless her father or husband forbade it on the day he heard of it. This shows a woman's submission to her father and husband. It also shows the seriousness of a man's responsibility as head of home. Does it not? Yes. You are responsible for your household for a man, isn't he? Yes. You, you better speak up, Ray. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, it is, you know. Mm -hmm. But how many men fail to do that? Many, many. Way too many. <laughs> yeah, they don't, you know. And that's when I get into about um, integrity. So what did we learn about the cross-references of vows? We looked at Ecclesiastes. I said it. <laughs> well, it's better not to vow than yeah. to vow and not keep it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, you know, paying when he's vowed is better not to vow than to vow and not pay. Matthew. This is Jesus talking. Mm -hmm. Yes be yes. Your no be no. Yeah, it's better not to make any vows at all, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. How about James, Jesus's brother? Do not make any vow. Mm -hmm. that's, that's Jesus. You don't fall into judgment. <clears throat> there you go. Yeah, so that you oh. don't fall into judgment. Mm -hmm. You know that that you know he kind of extends it. You know. How does this relate to what we say? Put this to yourself. Have you made promises you haven't kept? Mm -hmm. yeah. I have a lot of renters who do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, I've been there, done that. <laughs> then you think of Ananias and Sapphira in Acts where they, they vowed to give the Lord their land. Mm -hmm. And they reneged on that and he struck them down. He, they died, you know. I thought of that. Yeah, it's just, it's important to keep your word. If you make a promise, a vow, you know, 
Because that's part of integrity, isn't it? Yes. This is Leave kind it. of this is kind of mundane, but growing up in Massachusetts, I don't know, the kids in the neighborhood would say, swear on a stack of Bibles. Did anyone else grow up with that saying, or is that like? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Not in California. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, but well, you, it, think about when you get up to testify, you're supposed to, that now they've removed it, yeah. but you know, you used to put your hand on a Bible and say, everything I say is the truth. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, there's another way that this country is walking away from God. Well, yeah. they have taken God out of everything. I know. Numbers 31, God's vigil, vengeance on Midian. Mm -hmm. What does the Lord tell Israel to do and why? This can be kind of harsh, so. Um, kill all the, the men, kill all the people because they, um, that was, Baal had corrupted them and then they corrupted the Israelites. That's right. The Lord told Moses to take full vengeance on the Midianites. Verse 3 says they were to execute the Lord's vengeance on Midian. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Afterward, he, he, Moses would be gathered to his people. He would die. That's what gathered to his, his people means, by the way. But he, that wasn't until Deuteronomy 34. How does mm -hmm. this relate to Numbers 22 through 25? And this, this is going back to last week's lesson. Why was God upset with the Medians, Medianites? Because of Balaam. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Because they, they, he, Median was behind the nations that hired Balaam to curse Israel. Um, God only allowed them to bless him, though. Bless Israel. And then Balaam counseled them to lead Israel into sins of immorality and idolatry mm. by the Midianite women. So according to Numbers 31, I guess I didn't put my thingy on here, so the answers are just there. Um, it was a thousand from each tribe. By the way, figure this out. This was interesting. Um, it came up in the commentary I read. They had 12,000 people that went in there. That was only 2% of the, of the people, of the men. Mm. So it wasn't a very big portion, was it? Mm -hmm. They killed every male, the five kings of Median, and Balaam, the son of Beor. So they finally got Balaam there. Wow. And by the way, one of the five kings was the father of Cosby, Cosby the Medianite woman slain by Phineas? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, whenever. In Numbers 25, 15. Okay, but they captured the women and the children. Cattle flocks and goods were plundered, and their cities and camps were burned. Mm -hmm. Why did Moses get angry at them, though? Because the they were the ones that led them astray. Yeah. Absolutely. They were the women that led them astray, and they didn't kill them, as, lo as God had ordered, right? Now they were bringing them back into the camp. With them. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they contaminated themselves with with those that did not worship the one true and living God. Yeah, here we go back to defilement, right? Mm -hmm. It shows how important women are too. You can't just write them off, you know. Like you know, they they count. It matters. They have influence mm -hmm. for a good or bad. Yeah. Absolutely, that's exactly what I was going to say. So how were the men of war purified? Because then they, they went out. Mm -hmm. Now they were, they were among dead bodies, weren't they? So they had to be purified, right? Yes. How were they purified? They had to stay outside the camp for seven days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they have to wash the ashes of the red heifer. Yeah, the mm -hmm. red heifer. Here's yeah. that red heifer stuff again, right? To be purified. Yeah. They were um, water mixed with the red ash, the ashes of the red heifer to purify them because they had touched corpse. So maybe we should do that with our police and they would, you know, really realize the, you know, 
the severity of things like that. Anyway. Hmm. Okay. Uh, what were the results of the battle? They had a lot of booty. <laughs> I know, <laughs> booty. <laughs> you love that word. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I was really surprised in verse 18 that, that God allowed them to keep the girls, you know, even though they had, they were the younger ones that had not, you know, defiled themselves, you know, or, or even had had. They were virgins. Man. I, right. I was just surprised, you know, with, with him wanting them to be separate and not marrying into these other tribes. It really shocked me that he allowed them to keep them mm -hmm. as the booty. So, yeah, so I wonder, I wonder what position, were they just slaves in? Yeah, that's what I wonder, too. I don't know, because it really doesn't go into it, and my comment, I wondered that, too, and my commentary didn't say anything about it, just said that they were virgins, so, you know, yeah. it was mm -hmm. okie dokie, I, I don't know. I told them to purify them as well, in verse 19, they're included. Does it really? It says, purify yourselves, you and your captives. Yeah. Mm. All right. There we go. What verse was that? 19. 19. I missed that one. Whoever has killed any person or whoever has touched any Oh, slaves. captives, yeah. Good you job. and your captives. Hey, good catch on that, Jan. I hadn't caught that. And your captives, huh? Hmm. And every garment and every article of leather and all work of goat's hair and all articles of wood. Half the booty was given to the warriors who went to the battle and half to the congregation. And there was a whole bunch of booty, wasn't there? Yeah. Because, you know, it goes and names them all, and it's like, wow. And no man was missing. That means nobody died. Wow. Because the Lord had prepared them for the battle and commanded them to go into battle and given them his desired results. And only using 2% of the people. Imagine that. Yeah, and they went and wiped out an entire nation. Mm -hmm. This time Israel obeyed when he said to go and fight. What, mm -hmm. How do you compare that to Numbers 14 when they went and did it on their own? And what was the results then? Mm -hmm. Good. One good results, was it? Mm -hmm. So, did, did you think of the fact that that the Moabites actually came from Noah, from from one of the sons. Yeah, mm -hmm. but not the good son. <laughs> not the chosen son. Yeah, okay. Well, he wasn't very good either, but we'll get to that in Genesis, won't we? <laughs> Were the Moabites the same as the Midianites? Were no. Really? Yeah. Were Somewhere I, sometime I did. Was it in this class or was it Genesis? I sent out the... I think it was, was this, this class. One. Yeah, this was one. Really yeah, that I sent out a, a a chart, you know, of the genealogy of mm -hmm. who, who these people came from. Yes. Yeah. I don't have it memorized, y'all. I'm so sorry. I just don't have it memorized. Well, mm -hmm. I have it in front of me. Um, we're now, didn't one of the one of them come from Katrina? Uh, Ka, one of Abraham's Abraham's second wife. Katura. Mm -hmm. Katura, thank you. Sharon, okay, if you got it in front one, of you. What this is, this is Ham, Shem, Japheth. Let me look here. Aram. Um, I'm, when I'm thinking it was on the left side, the bottom left-hand side. But, yeah, it could have been. It, it came from. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. So who, am, who am I looking for? The Moabites? Yeah. Moabites or the Medianites. How come well, I can't see? You know, the reason I can't see them is because you guys are waiting for an answer. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> well, I'll just go on, and if you figure it out, you can pipe okay. it in, okay? I will. So next week is our last class, and Deuteronomy will begin on April 15th, and we will start with lesson one, okay? Because pretty much it's the same group. We just have a few more people that will join us. Um, by the way, and this is just for the people that live in the Jackson area, you know, mm -hmm. and that includes you, Barbara Reed. Um, 
June one, uh, June I will in June probably the first week of June I'll be ordering the workbooks for the rest of the year for the local persons only, and I'll co I'll be contacting y'all about that time about how much you guys send me and all that, and then we got to get together and all that sort of stuff. I want to thank you guys. You guys have been awesome in this class. Everybody has pretty much made it every week, and I that's impressive. Okay. So I, I just want to say thank you so much and thank you for your prayers and, and, and for your dedication to studying the word of God, because I think it changes your life. Does it not? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Denise, you know, I did not think numbers could be so interesting. Denise, the Moabites yeah. came through Lot. Through Lot. Okay. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. We had Moab and ben Am. The uh, Edomites came through Esau. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Edom Okay. Them. Okay, that's why because they're not on here. I'm looking. Oh, the Midianites okay. aren't on there. You, you, it's in lesson five handouts. Uh, oh, where you go, girl. The genealogy, and so when it goes down, so see, see that was just last week, y'all. You can't remember. I can't remember <laughs> last week. That's bad, isn't it? <laughs> it's a bit bad, bad, bad. Because I'm looking it's on a whole the page. Chart. But that was the Edomite. Edomite Here it is. Edomite. Okay, the Mennonites came from. Um, the yeah, it was one of was, eighty. Was from, one of Abraham's kids. Right. It, Midian was uh, from Tatura. Yes, that's what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But not the Moabites and not the Edomites. Yeah, the Moabites are from Lot. Yeah. Yeah. And the Ammonites were from. Lot too. Even though Lot was considered righteous in, yeah, in Sodom, never... his mm -hmm. son, or he had daughters, so we don't know about his sons, but it, the ones that came through him, the Ammonites and the Moabites, were not godly. Mm. Well, remember, these were from incest. Yes, incest. Yes. They got their daddy drunk. I don't get that, but okay. You know, ugh. Um, all right. The next generation is the name of this. I know I put that on there. This, I had trouble getting this. We've had, well, here, I'm going to stop the recording. Where, where do I stop recording?